If you have been jonesing for a Porsche, but you can't quite come up with the scratch for that 911, have I got a deal for you. This is the 2022 Porsche Macan, and it is the least expensive way to get into the Porsche brand, starting at a relatively cheap 56,250 American dollars. The Macan has been redesigned for 2022, so we've got a new front fascia up here, but I still have the quad running lamps, which I really like. I think it gives a great lighting signature at night. These side blades, well, they've always been there, but now they've got a little bit of texture on them and it adds a lot of visual interest from the side. When we come around to the back, this diffuser's just a little bit higher and we've got this LED tail lamp blade that runs across the whole width of the vehicle. I just love the way this car looks at night. The lighting signatures are just chef's kiss. Now you can get 21 inch wheels on your Macan, but you guys, not on the base model. These are 19s. But who cares what it looks like, right? We wanna know how it drives, so get in that right seat. Let's go for one. Under the hood here is a two liter turbocharged inline four cylinder engine, which is more powerful than last year. 261 ponies and 295 pound feet of torque. Now that's not a lot, especially when you consider that the Macan and GTS trim, you can get 434 horsepower out of that bad boy. But still, when you look at the competition, other sport compact SUVs from Germany, like the Audi Q5 or the BMW X3, I mean, it's pretty much right in line. Power goes down to all four wheels through a quick shifting seven speed PDK automatic transmission. And this particular vehicle also has the optional sport chrono package. Now, listen, if you're here just for the brand name, like don't even bother with the Sport Chrono, but if you want to get as much fun out of this little two liter as you possibly can, go ahead and spend the extra thousand bucks or so. You're going to get a Sport Plus button, which includes launch control, brings a zero to 60 time down to about 5.8 seconds, which is vaguely quick. There's also this cool Sport Response button, which is kind of like a push to pass. It will put the car into its highest performance mode for about 20 seconds, just so you can like zip around trucks on the highway, things of that nature. Now, this chassis is so well composed, okay? And a good driver can really hustle this guy through the turns. I mean, as long as you're willing to keep up the momentum and keep it on the pipe, it's gonna be really fun. This car has got some, you know, adaptive air suspension as well as some torque vectoring doodads. Is it worth it on this vehicle with this amount of power? Eh. I'm not so sure. I mean, yes, on the upper trims, definitely. But down here at the base model, you know what? Just turn it to Sport Plus, keep it to the red line and have a little bit of fun. Now the biggest change to the interior is this new center console. It's backlit and it's haptic and it brings it much more in line with the rest of the Porsche lineup. I really like the way it looks, but sometimes I have to like aggressively poke at some of the buttons in order to get them to respond. I've got a 10.9 inch screen here that's running wireless Apple CarPlay, which is pretty cool. But for some reason, Porsche has given us a new infotainment system, but not the newest infotainment system. So there's no Android Auto. So sorry, Android users. Um, I really like how quick the inputs are and the screen is really quick to respond. However, I find the menu substructure to be a little bit confusing, but you know what? My colleagues at Roadshow, like they love it. Now, another thing that kind of chaps my hide about the Macan is the lack of standard driver's aids. I mean, sure, I get lane departure warning and park assist, but if I want things like adaptive cruise control or lane keeping assist or even blind spot monitoring, I have to pay extra for that. I mean, come on, I can get most of those things in a Toyota RAV4, what's the deal? Now, as we are filming this, gas prices in my home state of California, it's about $6 a gallon. So you're probably concerned about fuel economy. And the Macan does not get great fuel economy. You're talking 19 miles per gallon in the city, 25 on the highway and 21 combined. I mean, that is terrible compared to the competition. The turbocharged two liter in the Audi Q5, that gets 29 MPG on the highway. The BMW X3, the Volvo XC60, and the Mercedes-Benz GLC, those all get 28 on the highway. I mean, I've been driving this thing for a week, I'm getting 23, and it cost me $90 to fill up. And to add insult to injury, this thing starts at $10,000 more than the rest of that aforementioned competition. So like, ouch, right? 
still, the Macan is a fun little crossover to drive, and it certainly has a lot of that Porsche name brand cachet. Might not be the value proposition that we want, but it still should put a smile on your face, even in this base trim. Okay, what do you guys think about the 2022 Macan? Is this a case for the base, or would you just go up higher to the S, the GTS, or that new Macan T? Let me know in the comments, and as always, like and subscribe.